One day, Posadina, the young name this thing, was picking water bottles with her mother. So she's the gas girl. I drew in the cool, moist woods. Posadina filled her basket with lilies and mountains. But when she spied the white petals of Nelsie's flowers, she strayed far away from her mother. Just as Posadina picked a beautiful Nelsie, the earth began to rumble. So many of the girls cracked open, letting burn beds and ripping flowers and trees up from the roots. Then out of the dark dust sprang Pluto, the god of the underworld. Setting up in the black chair, Pluto fiercely drove his stallions to Posadina. The maiden screamed for her mother while ah. she was far away from far away and could not save her. Pluto grabbed Posadina and drove his chariot back into the earth. Then the ground closed in, leaving not a scene when the mountains echoed with Posadina's screams. Her mother rushed into the room from the school. Her daughter has disappeared. Beside herself with grief, Sirius began searching for her kidnapped daughter in every land. For nine days, the goddess did not rest, but carried two torches through the cold nights, searching for Proserpina. On the tenth day, Hecate, goddess of the dark of the moon, came to Ceres. Holding up a lantern, the shrouded goddess said, I also heard your daughter scream, but I didn't see her. Let's fly to Helios, the sun god. Sirius and Hecate flew to Helios, the sun god, and weeping, Sirius asked Helios if he'd seen her daughter while he was shining down upon the woods. I pity you, so Ceres, for what I know it is the loose child, but I know the truth. Pluto wanted Posefina for his wife. So he asked his brother Jupiter to give him permission to kidnap her. Jupiter gave his consent, and now your daughter reigns over the land of the dead with Pluto. Ceres screamed in rage and thrust her fist toward Mount Olympus, carrying, cursing Jupiter for aiding in the kidnapping of his own daughter. Then she returned to Earth, disguised as an old woman, and began wandering from town to town. Woman. I was kidnapped by pirates. Now I not know where I am. Soon you know, paper, the princess brought Sosius home to the palace. At the palace, the mother of the queen took an immediate liking to Sosius, and she noticed how good she was with the baby. From the prince, when she asked Sosius if she was going to be the when the when she asked Sosius if she would live with them and be the his host, the goddess promised to see him. Sirius grew deeply fond of the child. The thought that he would someday grow old and die was too much for her to bear. So she decided to change him from a mortal to a god. Every night, when everybody else was asleep, she poured a magic liquid on the body of the baby prince and held him in a fire. Soon, the prince began to look like a god. Everyone was amazed at his beauty and strength. The queen, disturbed by the changes in her child, came in the nursery and watched Sirius and the boy. And when she saw Sirius place the child in the fire, she screamed for help. Help! Stupid woman, I was going to make your son a god. He would have lived forever. Now he'll be immortal and die just like the rest of you. I will only forgive you if you build a great temple in my honor. Then I will teach your people the secret rites to help the corn grow. At dawn, the king ordered a great temple to be built for the goddess. But after the temple was completed, Ceres did not reveal the secret rites. Instead, she sat by herself all day, grieving for the kidnapped daughter. She was in such deep mourning that everything on earth stopped growing. It was a terrible year. There was no food and no, and people and animals began to starve. Jupiter grew really worried. If Ceres caused the people on earth to die, there would be no more gifts and offerings for him. Finally, he sent gods from all of this to speak with him. The gods came to Ceres and offered gifts and food in return to make the earth fertile again. I never will, not unless my daughter is returned safely to me. Jupiter had no choice.
Hermes went to bid his son Mercury, the messenger of God, to return to the kingdom to her mother. Jupiter had no choice but to bid his son, Mercury, the messenger god, to return Proserpina to her mother. Wandering the underworld, Mercury passed through a dark, through the dark, smoky caverns filled with, filled with ghosts and phantoms, until he came to a misty throne room of Pluto and Proserpina. Though the maiden was still brave, she had grown accustomed to her new home and almost had forgotten her mother. Her. Your brother Jupiter has ordered you to return Proserpina to her mother. Mercury told Pluto otherwise, so she's going to show you. Pluto knew he could not disobey Jupiter, but he didn't want his wife to leave forever. She can go, but first we must be alone. When Mercury left, Pluto spoke softly to Proserpina. If you stay, you'll be clean of the underworld, and the dead will give you great honors. As Proserpina stared into the eyes of the king of the dead, she remembered the wildflowers in the woods and the sunlit open meadows. I would rather return. All right, go. But before you leave, eat this small pomegranate fruit. It is the fruit of the underworld. It will bring you good luck. What have I done? You have eaten sacred food of the underworld. Now you must return for half a year to live with Pluto, your husband. And this is how the seasons begin. For when fall and winter come, the earth grows cold and barren because Proserpina lives in the underworld with Pluto and her mother mourns. But when her daughter comes back to her serious status of grain, turns the world into spring and summer, the corn grows and everything flowers again. Applause.